the star of this tournament so far for the U.S., undoubtedly Megan Rapinoe. She wasn't in the starting mm -hmm. 11 tonight. Everybody, again, it was like Lindsey Horan in the last match going crazy on Twitter. Julie, what did you think when you saw Rapino was on the bench? I know you hinted it, hinted at it on your appearance on ESPN FC uh, yesterday, and then how do you think the U.S. did without her on the field? Well, I, I, uh, I, I text Aaron Heifetz right away and said, and about that tape again when she, she was standing on the sideline for warm-up. Um, you know, with, with that tape on her right leg at training yesterday, what, what I was saying to you, Sebi, last night is I had said to Aaron Heifetz, you know, what's going on with that? And he, he just kind of ho-hum, oh, you know, it's 33 years old, and, you know, that's what you do when you're 33, you have a lot of tape on it. But she then confirmed in the mix zone tonight it's a hamstring injury. She's day-to-day. I'm hearing that she should be fine for the final, um, and but I think they were worried about her going. It's also worrisome, though, that you saw Rose Lavelle in the telecast actually mouth that it's a hamstring. Um, we know the history of Rose Lavelle with her hamstrings, and those are two of your most creative players, and I thought Rose Lavelle was fabulous tonight. So, I mean, that's something the U.S. obviously going to monitor, but... Having said that, the one thing we've talked about this whole tournament, Kate, which you know well, is how deep this group is. And for them to be able to say, okay, come in, Sam Mewis. Okay, come in, Carly Lloyd. I mean, look at the bench you're going to. So um, I think you're going to miss two of those players if they can't get back. But this is a team, even without those two, I think they can win this World Cup. Rapino or Lavelle, who do you think the U.S. would miss more in a final? Well, I think Lavelle is the one unique player that they have. We got to see Tobin Heath just do a fantastic job, probably her best game of the tournament, going up and down the flake and being creative. But Rose Lavelle in the center of the park was unlocking defenses by doing different things. That dummy that set up the first mm -hmm. goal, we haven't seen that. And that she brings that unpredictableness that an opponent like Sweden hasn't seen or an opponent like the Netherlands. So Rose Lavelle is a bigger miss because we also got, we got to see Kristen Press step up in the big moment mm. and convert. Uh, can we talk about the manager here, Jill Ellis? Mm -hmm. Another big game, some more big decisions. I mean, at some point we've gone from she's on the hot seat to now she may end up being looked at, and Julie, I'll start with you on this, as one of the best women's football managers of all time at the international level. <laughs> Easy there, Sebi. Um, yeah, she's she's been tremendous, and and I think you know look at look at the the press uh, change today. She scores, and I don't know what they marked it as. I marked it as the ninth minute in my book, right? She comes in early. That early goal, as we know, the U.S. has never lost unless it was the World Cup final in 2011 when they score first. So that's always huge for them. Kristen Press scores that goal. Who serves the ball into Alex Morgan on that second goal? The other change she made in the lineup in Lindsey Horan, who I also thought played well. And and, and, it, and it's, a, it's a conundrum for her in that midfield. But I think the good news is for the United States, any way they go, with Mewis, with Horan, um, with press outside, I mean, they've been able to show how much and how important this depth is a part of who they are. I know you're going to hate me for saying this, Kate, but maybe oh, Ali Krieger was right. Maybe Allie uh, Krieger was right. Maybe no. their Allie bench Krieger's, really is the next best I, team in the world. You know, I actually think she put Allie Krieger in either because O'Hara was hurt, right? Uh -huh. But almost as like redemption a little bit mm -hmm. by putting her in. I, I still hate Allie Krieger's comment that we were the best 11 and the second best starting 11 on our bench. They don't. Mm. They don't. But, but the depth has been huge. But the you depth can't is, deny that. No, the depth has been huge. But what has been huge is going in and playing around key players that are very confident that then convert. You know how much easier it is a sub in that starting 11 when Kristen Press scores that goal? That takes the pressure off everybody. And when the pressure's off, you're able to express yourself more freely, right? You're able to play around. So the U.S. is making... The collective effort of the United States is making it easier for anyone that comes into this lineup. Julie, she went to Stanford, so I know you have something <laughs> nice to say about uh, Kristen Press, but this is a player who has not had success in the big moments. Boy, she had a big, big moment today. Yeah, she did, and that was a great goal. But let's give some credit to Kelly O'Hara, another Stanford grad, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Sebi. Um, who, on that, on that right side, oh, man, I wish I would have known that in the moment. Stanford to Stanford for the goal, for the first one. Of course it is. Um, but, yeah, she, she's back post. I heard Kate in the highlight saying, you know, where was Lucy Bronze? Lucy Bronze was a was, was, uh, ball watching uh, on that back post and you know for all the talk about Lucy Bronze coming into mm -hmm. this game can we go down that line you know I, I, I didn't think that was nearly the best game we've seen out of her um, but it was to take nothing away from Christian Press it was a great goal.
A few disappointing performances on the England side. I know you were talking to the boys earlier, and you pointed that, that Phil Neville may have been a little uh, bit conservative. Well, I don't understand why they went to a 4-4-2 if that's going to nullify your right wing. They decided to move Nikita Paris, who was so dominant as a right winger, and put her as the second forward in the 4-4-2, which broke up that partnership between Bronze and Paris, which is the most lethal flank combination that we've seen in this World Cup. I don't get why he did it, because now you just nullified the impact of those players individually, because collectively, they are greater than the sum of its parts. So I think Phil Neville should face some criticism for going to that conservative formation with those players. They had no speed on the right, and that was one of the things that was making him dangerous all tournament long. For more, sign up now for ESPN+.